Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to another episode in our knowledge series where we shall be dealing with the subject of geography. Here today we shall be having a discussion on the topic of retreating monsoon. Now retreating monsoon is one of those topics that oftentimes puzzles us. And that is because we are unable to understand why that mechanism ends up happening. And moreover, what are the weather conditions that are experienced during this time? This is also one of those areas from where you will find UPSC to be asking questions in the prelims quite frequently. So that makes this topic very, very important. Having said that, when we talk about the retreating monsoon, in simpler terms, it is nothing but the retreat of the monsoonal system from the Indian subcontinent. Now, it might sound very simple and easy for that matter. But then, the whole process, how it unfolds, is nowhere simple. So, in order to gain a perfect idea about how the monsoonal system retreats, we will have a short glance regarding how the monsoonal system advances into India. Why does it do so? We won't be talking much about the advancing monsoon in detail, but just a brief idea so as to help you understand that what conditions are actually reversed and what is it that we call as the retreat of monsoon. So, initially, first of all, what do we mean by monsoons in general? So, whenever you hear about the term monsoon, this refers to the seasonal reversal of winds which happens in any place, any different area. And that seasonal reversal of winds might also end up bringing upon different types of climatic conditions and different type of weather conditions in a local area. So when we talk about monsoons in India, in some way the monsoons in India are the true reflection of that fact. Why do I say so? So what happens is basically during these months, that is the months of May, June, July, August and September, till the early part of September, the first week of September. The wind direction, when it comes to the Indian subcontinent, wind direction is actually from southwest to northeast. Now, first of all, why is the wind direction like this? Why will the wind system flow in this manner? So that is primarily because of the shifting of the ITCZ. What is ITCZ? ITCZ refers to the intertropical convergence zone. Now this is a low pressure area or a low pressure belt. Now this ITCZ or the intertropical convergence zone is that area of absolute low pressure which is created because of high temperature. And this ITCZ as it moves so does the wind system accompanying the ITCZ. So what are the winds which reach the region of ITCZ? As you would have seen in the tricellular model of atmospheric circulation, basically, when we talk about this zone of low pressure, here you have winds coming both from the northern tropics as well as the southern tropical region. And both these winds combine at this region of ITCZ, they rise up and cause significant precipitation in the region of ITCZ. Now, ideally, ITCZ should be located around the region of equator. But as I said, it represents the low pressure area created because of high temperature. Now, you would have observed that during the months of April, May and also in the early part of June, the temperature in the northern part of the country is scorchingly high. Many parts of the country in the northern part, obviously, they have been recording a temperature in the range of 45 degree and excess. So in such conditions, when the temperature all across the region of Thar Desert and the Northern Plains are so very high, this ITCZ or this low pressure zone, that shifts in the region to the Northern part of India. This is the location or the position of the ITCZ, which we observe under general conditions. Now, why do we need to understand what the location of ITCZ is? So this ITCZ, as I told you, is a driver of the wind systems. So basically, here you will also have winds moving from the southern hemisphere, the southern subtropical region. 
So the winds oftentimes they originate from around 30, 40 degrees south of latitude and they start first of all moving in the leftward direction. Why would they move in the leftward direction? Because in the southern hemisphere the winds tend to deflect to the left because of the influence of the Coriolis force. But as soon as these wind systems they cross the equator they turn to their right again because of the influence of Coriolis force. Now observe the direction of these winds. The direction of these winds is from southwest to northeast. That is why during this season we say that there is an advancing monsoon or a southwest monsoon. Monsoon system is coming from the southwestern direction. Now these winds because they are carrying significant amount of moisture after traveling thousands of kilometers across the Indian Ocean they would be moisture rich and moisture laden and eventually all these winds they are trying to reach the ITCZ they don't know about the territorial domain of any country for that matter all that they are trying to do is they want to reach the low pressure acute low pressure at ITCZ but in the process of doing so they will cross over the land areas they will hit the topographical barriers in the form of western ghats in the form of himalayas and they bring copious amount of rainfall across the country and that is the season of the monsoon or the advancing monsoon now why is this phase referred to as the advancing monsoon because it is advancing slowly and steadily across the country in around a month of time that is by the end of june itself or the last week of june these wind systems would have covered almost the entirety of the country and they would bring significant amount of rainfall throughout the various different parts of the country. Now if you observe the wind direction, this is the satellite map indicating the wind direction. Now why I want you to observe this is, I want you to observe the direction that the winds are taking but also the fact that these wind systems are also directed towards the Bay of Bengal region owing to the shape of the Indian Peninsula region. They are directed towards the Bay of Bengal region. Then they enter through the region of Bangladesh and cause rainfall in the eastern part of the country. Now, all this is happening because these winds, they want to reach the IT season. But from the month of August onwards, here we have to understand first of all the positioning of the sun during different seasons. Now we know that on June solstice that is 21st of June the sun appears to be shining vertically over the region of Tropic of Cancer. Right? As and when the months pass on the southward movement of the sun is initiated. By the time of 23rd, 22nd of September, the sun shall be shining vertically over the region of equator. Now, wherever the sun happens to shine vertically, invariably that region gets up heated quite significantly. So, from the month of August onwards, as the sun's southward movement significantly leaves that of the Indian subcontinent, the ITCZ which was lying above the Tropic of Cancer which pulled all these winds, that ITCZ starts withdrawing. Now as the ITCZ starts withdrawing itself, the whole system in itself, that starts withdrawing itself. What happens as a result of that? The wind systems which are in place, that also start withdrawing themselves. But then why will the ITCZ withdraw itself in the first place? that is primarily because of multiple reasons. First of all, after receiving significant amount of rainfall in the months of June, July and August, the temperature conditions of the region of the Indian subcontinent, they become slightly more acceptable, more moderate so to say. The temperature reduces because you would have observed the temperature that you experience in the month of May, the same degree or the magnitude of temperature is not something that you will experience in the month of July or August because significant amount of downpour would have reduced the temperature. With the reduction in temperature, the low pressure starts weakening. So as the low pressure starts weakening, some other area might develop a low pressure because of heating as the sun's movement goes to the south. 
So that brings about a withdrawal of the ITCZ. But this withdrawal of ITCZ, you have to understand in comparison with the different seasons. So if you observe the ITCZ and its location in the month of July, while this is slightly exaggerated, but then it is somewhere close to the portion that we have indicated here. Now, when the ITCZ is situated here, the wind system shall be attracted towards the ITCZ. But look at the position of the ITCZ in the month of January. It is to the south of equator. So this is the system which eventually comes into establishment. This movement of ITCZ within various different months, that movement brings about a change in wind systems. So that withdrawal of ITCZ from the Indian subcontinent also is something which we refer to as the withdrawal of the monsoonal system. And why is it so? So here, you get an idea about the withdrawal of the southwest monsoon for the year 2021 as depicted by Indian Meteorological Department. Now here you would observe something, that from the first and the second week of September itself, first of all, the low pressure system starts withdrawing itself from the region of Northwestern India, the region of Rajasthan, the region of Punjab, Haryana, etc. Now, this withdrawal process or this withdrawal phenomena will not initiate itself in the month of August, will not initiate itself in the month of July, will end up initiating that withdrawal only in the second week of September. As per Indian Meteorological Department, this withdrawal is initiated after, in general conditions, 17th of September. Now, slowly and steadily, the pressure systems, they start shifting to the south. So let us understand what will be the impact laid by that. So if I take you back to the map of the country, let's take you back to this particular map in itself. So basically, if the ITCZ is in its said location, as I have depicted here, so all the wind systems would be causing winds across this entire area. But imagine if this ITCZ suddenly starts withdrawing slightly to the south. If the ITCZ's new location is somewhere here. That means the wind system would still try to reach the ITCZ, but then the northern part of the country, they won't have the rain-bearing clouds coming anymore because as the ITCZ will shift south, in the northern part of the country, you will have the re-establishment of the northeasterly trade winds, the tropical wind which generally reaches the ITCZ. So again, as this ITCZ withdraws even further, let's say the ITCZ has reached a new location here, that would again mean that now the wind systems are able to reach only up till this year. Now, this wind system is important to us. Why? Because the southwest winds are the ones which are carrying moisture. Because they are the ones who are covering vast expanses across the Indian Ocean. So that is why they are very rich in moisture. Further withdrawal as it will happen, lesser area will be influenced by the southwest wind system. So this whole southwestern wind circulation which has been bringing rainfall, that is in itself getting withdrawn. And as it starts getting withdrawn, thereby the areas which have been receiving rainfall, they start becoming drier. However, that is also something which is demarcated by a clear sky under general conditions. So, understand what happens in the month of September onwards. From the month of September, as you can observe, on 17th of September, this is where the normal date for withdrawal is. Then on 20th of September, the withdrawal happens further. This continues to happen. Observe the normal date for withdrawal at around 15th of October. So it is not as if that today you go to the sleep and tomorrow morning you wake up and the monsoonal system has withdrawn itself from the country. It is a long drawn process. A long drawn process which oftentimes begins at around 17th or 
let's demarcate 17th itself because that is the declaration as per the Indian Meteorological Department. Oftentimes, you can say that it starts or it initiates itself in the second or third week of September and it carries itself on up till November. So it is a long drawn process, slowly and steadily, the wind systems, they start withdrawing. Now, this low pressure which was existent in the northern part of the country, the northwestern part of the country, which had been heated so much during the months of April, May and June, that is being re replaced by a high pressure system. Why? Because now we are in the month of September and October and that is when the mercury starts dipping, that is the temperature starts reducing. As the temperature starts reducing, that brings about a kind of a high pressure system. So thereby, you have an establishment of the wind system from northeast to the ITCZ, just like you have the northeastern trade winds. So if you observe here, Retreating monsoon, basically, this is the textual portion of it, is the withdrawal of the wind system or the southwest monsoon winds from North India. And what happens after 1st September? Basically, cessation of rainfall activity over the area for continuous five days. Only after September, the cessation of rainfall activity for five days might happen in the month of June and July as well. But we don't call that as the retreat of monsoon. That is simply termed as a break in the monsoon because the monsoonal system still exists. The southwestern winds are still coming over to India. Only when after five days of lack of rainfall in the month of September along with establishment of anticyclone in the lower troposphere. Anticyclone here, please don't get confused or scared by this term. It is a mere reflection of a high pressure zone. So a high pressure zone starts getting created in the northwestern part of the country. That is not only restricted to the northwestern part of the country, this high pressure initially is formed in the northern part of Pakistan itself, near the region around Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province or the region around Peshawar. There, the high pressure system is initiated. And that high pressure system starts filtering itself into the Indian subcontinent and it starts forming itself over the region of Punjab, over the region of Rajasthan and that brings about the wind systems in existence. Now, considerable reduction in moisture content is also prevalent as inferred from the various satellite water vapor images that we have. Other than that, during this period, the sky also becomes very, very clear. So because the sky becomes clear, that brings about a significant loss of heat. As you would have seen in the question paper for 2022 as well, you had a question regarding the role of clouds in the warming of the surface. So once the sky is devoid of the cloud system, that brings about an accelerated rate of cooling. Then furthermore, the climate in various places, the disappearance of clouds, that also ensures that the solar insulation during the daytime is quite significant. In certain parts across the country, the moisture brought by the wind system and moisture brought by the monsoonal system is still in existence. And the heating during the daytime is also quite oppressive because now the cloud systems are not there to protect you from the sunshine. So under the presence of high humidity and high temperature, and a lack of rainfall completely, that makes the temperature conditions very oppressive in the first and the second weeks of October. So that is why this kind of temperature condition where the heat is still high, not as high as during the pre-monsoon months or during the monsoon months, but still considerable amount of heat comparing it to the month of October, along with high amount of humidity that creates the existence of the condition which we refer to as October heat. This October heat is basically one of the key characteristics of the weather conditions that you experience during the time of the retreat of the monsoon. Now, severe tropical cyclones also end up emerging in the region of Bay of Bengal and the month of October to November that is during the phase of the withdrawal of the monsoon, 
the retreat of the monsoon that is dotted with many different tropical cyclones which are experienced. So why is it that while the whole of the Indian subcontinent is now cooling down under general conditions, why is it that Bay of Bengal still ends up breeding tropical cyclones? The answer to that again lies in the shift of the ITC set. So if you look at the ITCZ, the location or the presence of ITCZ during the month of November and even from the late part of October itself, the ITCZ during October is somewhere here. During the month of November, the ITCZ will come somewhere here. Again, later part of November here and the first week of December, you will find the ITCZ to be here. Now, one thing you will observe here is that while this whole system takes place and unfolds itself, first of all, you will have the re-establishment of the wind system from the northeastern part. The re-establishment of the wind system from the northeastern part would mean what? That these winds for most of the region, they would be originating over the land areas, so they would be significantly dry. So they don't bring the country. However, if you observe few of the wind systems crossing the Bay of Bengal, as they cross the Bay of Bengal region, again they will start picking up moisture. They pick up moisture and they hit the Tamil Nadu coastline, the Kurumandal coastline and southern part of Andhra Pradesh. So during these months of withdrawal of monsoon, as the ITCZ comes below the region of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, that is when the northeastern wind systems, they start having a significant impact and in fact the Tamil Nadu coastline receives more than 50% of its annual rainfall during the months of the retreat of the monsoon. The rainfall which is received by the Tamil Nadu coastline is very very important for the growth of certain agricultural crops. In many areas even paddy is cultivated based upon the rainfall received. But then, while we are at the shifting of the ITCZ and while we are looking at how the ITCZ is shifting, one thing you have to notice is that all this shift which is happening, this low pressure does lie over the region of Bay of Bengal, right? Now, Bay of Bengal being a very short water body, a small water body, it is not as large as the Arabian Sea. So, when you have the low pressure system lying over the region of Bay of Bengal, that breeds an ideal condition for the generation and birth of a tropical cyclone. That is why, if you look at the previous year's data and records, many tropical cyclones start developing. For example, in the previous years, you had Nivar, Burevi, many different kinds of tropical cyclones which develop in this region. They develop in this region. They move along the ITCZ and induced by the Coriolis effect, they start curving their way. So that is why during these months when the cyclones occur, they will generally hit the Tamil Nadu coastline. But then that also depends on the months when the cyclones are originating. For example, if the cyclonic system has developed itself in the region of Bay of Bengal in the month of October when the ITCZ is located here, then the cyclonic system which shall develop here shall end up hitting the Odisha and West Bengal coastline. Furthermore, if it develops during the month of November, it will hit the Tamil Nadu or the Andhra coastline. Sometimes what happens is that this cyclonic system even ends up developing in the first week of December. Now that might puzzle you that the temperatures are so low in the first week of December but then the low pressure still lies and lingers somewhere around the region of Bay of Bengal. And when you have the low pressure system lingering there, the tropical cyclone can form and as was the case in the previous year, they simply pass over the region of Sri Lanka, they just touch the southern tip of Tamil Nadu and they move across. So that is why the tropical cyclonic systems are created. Now that again gives you an added set of information that the tropical cyclonic system will only form when you have the low pressure region in this area. So that means again in the month of 
April and May as this low pressure system or ITCZ is traveling itself towards the northern part of the country then again you can have this cyclonic system but during the months of June, July, August, September when it is purely over the Indian subcontinent low pressure system does not form readily over the Bay of Bengal and that are the months where Bay of Bengal is generally free of cyclonic circulation. Now, while we have understood the process of retreat, what do we mean by retreat? One thing that we have to understand is that in many places, you will find that retreating and the northeastern monsoons, they are oftentimes misplaced and mixed with each other. The concepts are mixed with each other. So when we take a look at the northeast monsoon, you have to understand, it is a system which is very different from the retreat. Retreat of the monsoon is the withdrawal of the wind system. The process of withdrawal which spans across two to three months, that is the retreat. But when we talk about northeast monsoons, these are basically the wind systems which establish themselves when the ITCZ is firmly set itself around the region of equator. Let's say this is the ITCZ. Now, this happens in the second week of December onwards. And from the second week of December onwards, you will find the ITCZ entering into the region of the Southern Hemisphere. Why? Because it is now the summer in the Southern Hemisphere. So when the ITCZ lies here, the winds, and if you look at the wind pattern, the northeastern trade winds, they establish themselves completely and strongly so. So while crossing the Indian subcontinent, they won't be able to pick up any moisture. So that is why the northeastern monsoons don't cause rainfall in any part across the central portion of the country. But again, while crossing the region of Bay of Bengal, they will pick up moisture. They will bring rainfall in Sri Lanka. They will bring rainfall in coastline of Tamil Nadu and they will also bring rainfall in Andhra Pradesh and southern part of Andhra Pradesh. This northeastern monsoon and northeast monsoon by the way comes into existence from the month of December and extends up till the month of January as well. So this is very different in terms of periodicity with regards to the retreating monsoon system. Okay, so that is all that you need to know about the system of the retreating monsoon and that is enough for the examination be it for the prelims or for the mains examination thank you now let us take a few questions out there how does climate change affect the retreat of monsoon this is a question by Wismer so basically as the climate is changing as was experienced last year the retreat of the monsoon is oftentimes delayed slightly it is the retreat begins significantly later. As you could see in the image as well, the expected date of retreat was supposed to be around 17th of September, but the actual retreat last year began in the first week of October. And why was that? Because as the sea surface temperature is rising up, more low pressure areas are getting created and they bring additional amount of rainfall. So what happens as a result of this is, in the month of September, when the system should be withdrawing, in that month, you suddenly start receiving more amount of rainfall. That is why oftentimes, and as you would have observed last year, so much amount of rainfall happened in the month of September. Not only did it lead to a large-scale destruction of the standing crops, crops such as onions, etc., they were damaged, but at the same time, you had incessant flooding which was experienced across the river system of Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, etc. So that will lead to unseasonal flooding. Okay, so that is one of the impacts. Movement of ITCZ depends on vertical position of the sun. Generally, it is determined by that, but then the heating of the landmass and the hottest areas in the nearby region that play a more significant role. But you can always understand that heating of the landmass will always be dependent upon the motion of the sun. You will not have the condition that the Indian landmass is very heated up in the month of December because the sun's location is above Tropic of Cancer. This year, as per IMD, the rainfall is predicted to be 103%. So the retreating monsoon will also be a high rainfall. That will depend upon the conditions during the month of August. 
So this prediction that you see, that is the pre-monsoon prediction that they have generated. Oftentimes what happens is, during the month of August, you have the re-establishment of the subtropical jet stream over the central part of India and the northern plains of India, the southern branch of the subtropical jet stream. So that brings about a halt in the amount of rainfall. But then the heating and cooling of the Pacific also induces a change in the retreat. And that can make the retreat either a prolonged process or a very quick process. So that depends upon the conditions that we will observe in the month of August. Why monsoons are delaying every year? They are not. In fact, if you look at it this year, the monsoons, they arrived before the announced date, so to say. So it varies. And basically, the onset of monsoon is something which is dependent upon the withdrawal of the southwest, mons uh, southwest or rather the subtropical westerly jet stream from the Indian subcontinent. The moment the subtropical westerly jet stream that disappears, very soon the monsoonal system or the onset is observed. Is the retreating monsoon same as the northeast monsoon or is it different? It is different as we have seen and I have already told you that northeastern monsoons, the system, it ends up setting itself into place during the month of December and January when the ITCZ has left the Indian subcontinent and is below the region of equator. Why monsoon withdrawal is initiated in the northwest itself? That is because this withdrawal process has to do with the creation of the high pressure systems. The moment high pressure systems start getting created, the whole existence of this low pressure, that gets vitiated because ITCZ is nothing but a continuous band of low pressure cells. Now high pressure is initiated, as I said, in the northwestern part and furthermore in the region of Pakistan where you have the Potwar Plateau. So there, the temperatures, they start dropping quite significantly fast. And as the temperature starts dropping, there is an establishment of an anti-cyclonic condition, meaning what? Meaning the winds or the air will start hitting the ground and start moving in all directions. So that high pressure slowly and steadily expands itself. Then Punjab, Rajasthan, Rajasthan being a dry desert, what happens? The loss of heat, the rate of loss of heat is so significant that suddenly it will start cooling itself at an unprecedented rate. And that is when low pressure being reflected by or being replaced by high pressure initiates the withdrawal of ITCZ. El Nino and ITCZ have any relation? Not so much. ITCZ has to do with the heating of the landmass and the water bodies in the surrounding areas. El Nino is something generally which is referred to as the heating phase of the Pacific Ocean itself. So ITCZ's movement generally till now as much as the research has shown us that is not dependent upon the movement of the ITCZ or the warming of Pacific takes place over a period of two to three years. So that is why the El Nino system when it develops it oftentimes prevails for continuous seasons and similar is the case with La Nina. In retreating monsoon, Tanisha, generally, during the months of, so the question is, Tanisha, what are the crops that are associated with retreating monsoon? So during the retreat of the monsoon, observe the months, it is October and November. So at that point of time, you have the Rabi crops which are being sown, the Kharif crops are being harvested. For example, paddy and rice is being harvested and then the Rabi crops such as wheat, mustard, etc., they are being planted and sown. So that is the reason, one of the reasons that as the retreat of the monsoon happens, that is why you have to plant these crops very quickly and that is why farmers end up burning the stubble of the paddy as well. And that is what leads to stubble burning in certain parts of the northwest. So that is all that we will talk about in this topic and I hope you have understood the topic of retreating monsoon. Thank you.